In this video, we're going to be focusing on the code implementation of our new algorithm, which is supposed to solve the first non-repeated character in a string. Now, just to remind ourselves, the algorithm consisted of essentially two for loops, and we're going to see these two loops coming up in the code. The first for loop essentially went over every single character in the string, and so did the second one. It went over every single character in the string. The first one essentially built a data structure. In this case, it's an array that was compiling or housing all the character counts of the string and in the second one we basically went over every single character in a string and searched within our data structure for a character count equal to one and if that was the case we return that character immediately starting from the first character here in our for loop so we find the first non-repeated character so we're going to be implementing that algorithm and we're going to be implementing it two ways in one way we're going to be using a hash and the other way we're going to be using an array as our data structure now the disadvantage of using a hash is that it has a higher lookup overhead both hash and array have a big O of one lookup assuming that we are looking up over a key in this case or an index right here but the problem with the hash is that it actually involves, even though it's a single operation, this, that single operation is a little bit more involved than a single operation in the array. The array has two disadvantages. First of all, you're going to have to initialize the array to zeros, all the values within the array to zeros. And also, there's a huge space requirement associated with the array because the array will need one cell for every single possible character in your string. So which one are we going to use? If we're talking about long strings that are confined to ASCII characters, then we will use an array because the possible characters are basically just 128, 7-bit ASCII character. And if we're dealing with Unicode strings, so Unicode could actually have over 65K uh, possible characters. So we're, we're not going to have a huge array of 65K uh, or more cells we're just gonna have a hash instead and that hash was, will be as big as the string or the number of characters in the string so let's look at our two implementations so I put the code right here the code starts off right over here and I'll be posting it too for your referral so the first thing we do is that we import the hash table library and we're gonna be using it later now I'm gonna put my implementations the two function implementations I call the first one first non-repeated and the second one I call the first non-repeated two. This one uses an array, and this one uses a hash table. So this is this library we're importing it for the second part. So this is the first method, and I'm making it static so I could uh, easily call it later on. So what am I doing right here? The first step involves creating that data structure, which is the array, and it will have 128 spaces or cells of ints storing the character counts basically and this is the initialization that I talked about so for every single cell I am basically initializing the count to zero and right here what I'm doing these are the two for loops that we saw in the algorithm the first for loop essentially goes over every single character in the string so it transforms the string into a character array and it goes over every single character so this is an iterator and it basically increments the corresponding uh, cell in the array so we're just using the character as our index this is the big O of one lookup and then in the second for loop what we're doing is we are going once more over every single character in the string but this time we're looking for a character count equal to one if we can find it then we will return that character and we'll create a new character out of it so we won't return the primitive char type we will actually create an object character and return it the reason why we do that is because we also want to be able to return null in case we can't find anything so if we cannot find a character whose count is equal to one this will simply roll off to that point and we're going to be returning null from that function now this is the implementation using an array using the hash table we'll see that in the next video